Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Moa, aka Swedish Whiskey Girl, and today we're here with Craig Elke, 17 year old. That is a whiskey bottled at 46% ABV, and it's from a mix of both X Bourbon and X Sherry casks. Craig Elke is, of course, a brand that I have a bit of a special relationship to. Uh, at first in my whiskey journey, I did not used to like them at all. I would even probably have gone so far to say that this was my least favorite whiskey, specifically the Craig Elke 13. But recently, when I got to try it again, everything has now changed. And finally, I've fallen in love with the bad boy of Speyside. It is, of course, often called the bad boy of Speyside because of its influence of worm tops. Worm tops is a type of condenser, so it's a type of condenser that because it has less, well, it gives the spirit less copper contact. And when you do that, the copper actually is really good at extracting some flavors, for example, sulfuric notes. But when you use a condenser like a worm top where you have less copper contact, you get more of that kind of meaty spirit and the meaty kind of sulfuric aromas to stay in the whiskey, but there's only a few distilleries in Scotland still do this. And Craig Elke is one of them and probably, probably the one that's most known for it, I would say. But this creates a really specific character for them. And I almost wish, well, I haven't tried this one yet, but my experience with the 13 when I retried that was that I cannot at all see the flavors and the aromas that I was greeted by back when I didn't like it because now it's super fruity and it's quite tropical and it's an incredible whiskey if you ask me but I almost wished I could just turn off that side and see what I got when I didn't like it because I can't see it at all now and it's been such a massive change because before I could only get this kind of meatiness the sulfuric notes so if you're trying Craig Elke, that can be a good thing to keep in mind. Some people will find it super fruity, super tropical and lovely, like I do now, but some people will of course also get what I got before. Meaty, sulfuric, quite difficult in a way. Um, but I mean, it's the charm of whiskey. Uh, are you the first or the second type when it comes to Craig Elke? Please let me know. Always interesting, especially with something like this, it can really change your opinion. But. Let's get to having a little nose. It's almost immediately like pineapple. Like alcoholic pineapples. <laughs> I think if you would cut a pineapple up and then you would leave it in spirit for a bit, that's the kind of scent you would get. A little bit of kind of a, a mustiness, like a autumn leaves, kind of wet autumn leaves, that a little bit musty earthiness in a way. Quite citrusy, like lemon, lemon and pineapple, a little bit of earthiness. It's a, f a very fresh nose. It's, um, yeah. Maybe a little bit waxy, like a tropical scented candle as well. Interesting. Let's have a little taste. Slendera. What burst of flavor feels super fresh, so juicy. It's still that pineapple note, but like charred pineapples now. A fresh sweetness, so more like a red apple sweetness. A bit of oakiness, but more in the way that the fruit feels slightly charred, or at least a pineapple feels a bit charred. The apple just feels like when you bite into like a really juicy apple. A little bit grassy on the nose now. I can get a little bit of that sulfuric note on just on the end there. 
but it it's just there for a second and then it just morphs into a really lovely finish it's quite warming quite charry quite tropical still but it has a lovely lovely mouthfeel so it's um quite oily in the texture quite dense in its aromas A little bit of maltiness in the cherry notes, but I think the dominant flavour is that kind of pineapple, charred pineapple and red apple juiciness that I'm getting. A really lovely nose. Quite floral now as well, like floral tropical. The char nut almost has a bit of a saltiness to it. So like, if you've ever tried putting salt on like watermelon or on just any type of fruit, I, for lunch, sometimes eat like a fruit salad mixed with vegetables and feta cheese and usually have some herb salt on it. So sometimes you take a bite of a piece of fruit like an apple or a watermelon and it has a bit of saltiness on it. So the salt mixes with this kind of tropical fruitiness or juicy fruitiness that's a bit what it reminds me of slight vegetal bitterness along the char yeah a little bit of a vegetal note on the finish as well but still quite tropical, which is always what it surprises me so much. I can just get a hint of that sulfuric note that just twists this kind of charriness, it twists a little bit of the fruitiness. It's just there in the edges, just making it a very unique flavour. I think at the moment, because of this lovely experience with Kriegel, like not going from not liking it at all to really, really being super intrigued by it, I do have a soft spot for Kriegel at the moment. And I think it's, uh, I think it's, it's, I think it's fun, and it's, um, <laughs> yeah, something I will definitely keep exploring. Of course, in the range they have this thirteen-year-old, so they of course have this seventeen, and they have a thirty-one as well. That I think is part of their core range. But then they've done some really amazing things with the fifty-one that they gave away to a lot of people. Unfortunately, not anywhere close to where I live. But yeah, they definitely do some really interesting stuff. I would of course love to hear what you think of Kriegel. Okay, which one's your favourite, and have you ever gone around to tasting one of them? If you like what I'm doing here on YouTube and my other social channels, I would of course be absolutely over the moon if you consider using my affiliate links with either Master Malt, the Whiskey Exchange or the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society the next time you're shopping with them. All the information is in the description here below, as well as links to my other channels, my website, my Instagram, my Patreon and my Teespring shop. As always, a massive, massive thank you to my wonderful supporters on Patreon who make it possible for me to keep creating some really fun and interesting content and I hope to be able to do so in the future as well. So a big slanger to you. But I hope you've all had an absolutely wonderful day. Slanger va. Skål! Thank you.